In this lesson, we are going to understand Spring Boot Maven basics with VS Code. First, we will understand what are Spring Boot starter dependencies and what is starter parent. Next, we will understand bill of materials or BOM file and the associated dependency management. Generally, we create Spring Boot project with starter parent. We will also explore how to create a Spring Boot project without a starter parent. So, let's get started. I have my VS code opened. I don't have any project right now. For this particular lesson, I have created a sample project. You can notice this URL github.com slash j2expert 2015 spring rest sample. I'll include this in the YouTube video description. First, let me download the code from here. Download zip. Go into the download folder. Extract this. Removing the hyphen main part, placing this in a specific directory where I keep all VS Code Java projects. Going to VS Code and opening this particular project file. Open folder. This is the project, select folder. Now the project is getting activated. You can see Java colon activating. In the meantime, I can open the pom.xml. Let me resize this a little bit. So here, if you look at this particular Spring Boot project spom.xml, at the very beginning we have this parent tag and within that we have the Spring Boot starter parent. And at high level you can see under dependencies I have two starters Spring Boot starter web and Spring Boot starter test. Now what is this starter parent and what are this starter web and starter test? First I'll explain this starters and then we will discuss this starter parent. So what are these Spring Boot starters? Theoretically speaking, Spring Boot starters are a set of convenient dependency descriptors that you can include in your application. Now what is meant by dependency descriptors? That we need to understand. For example, if you want to create a web application, you can simply include the Spring Boot starter web in your pom.xml file. This will automatically include all the necessary dependencies for building a web application such as Spring MVC, Tomcat, Jackson, etc. Let's check this hands-on by going back to our project. So here I have the starter web, this particular dependency. Now on VS Code, on the left hand side, we have different sections, Java projects, Maven. If I click on this Maven section, I have this project and under that I have lifecycle dependency. Let me resize this a little bit. I'm dragging it a little bit upward and click on dependencies. Let me drag it a little bit to the right hand side so that I can see the full limb. So here under dependencies, I have these two starters, web and test. On the left hand side under dependencies, we can see these two. Now for a specific feature, a specific starter is created. For web, I have a starter. So the starter web should have everything related to web development. Now if I expand over here, these are basically included inside the starter web. I have starter JSON, I have starter Tomcat, I have Spring Web, I have Spring Web MVC. Everything I need for web is included inside this. Now, whatever is included within them also, there are specific granular level dependencies. For example, if I expand JSON, under JSON, I have different libraries, but, but these are high level abstractions so that dependency management becomes easier. Similarly, if I minimize this and expand test, we can see over here, we have Spring Boot test, we have auto configure, JSON path, XML bind. If I scroll down, there are many things, JSON Smart, Hamcrest, JUnit Jupyter. So, as we discussed, a particular starter is kind of a dependency descriptor so that it includes all the required, all the associated dependencies inside this. Now here, I have included these two starters, starter web and starter test. There are other starters also, like starter for JPA, starter for security. Same strategy is applicable for them also. Now we can discuss about Spring Boot Starter Parent. What is it? This Spring Boot Starter Parent is a special starter project that provides default configurations for our Spring Boot application. Like default configuration, we mean Maven plugins such as Maven Failsafe plugin, Maven Jar plugin, Maven Surefire plugin, Work plugin. All of these are included within this starter parent so that when we include this starter parent inside our project pom.xml, all these plugins and configurations are available inside our project pom file. Let's see 
how this works let me press control button and hover my cursor on top of this if i click over here now we can see this particular starter parent pom which is version 3.3.6 now spring boot starter what it contains first of all it contains a reference to another pom file which is spring boot dependencies now what is it this is basically the BOM file or a bill of material file. What is BOM file? What is bill of material? I'll explain that later on. Now it has a reference to the BOM file, which is Spring Boot dependencies. And also if I scroll down under plugin management, it has multiple plugins. The ones that we were mentioning, Maven compiler plugin, Maven jar plugin, Maven war plugin. So when we have these plugins available here in this starter parent, and ultimately we are inheriting this starter parent in our pom.xml then all these plugins become available inside our pom.xml another important thing as i was discussing earlier it contains a reference to the bom file which is the spring boot dependencies if i click over here i have this i have this spring boot dependencies pom file what this file does if i scroll little bit downwards under properties there are large number of properties you can see starting from active mq if i scroll down it's a huge list so what we have here is the specific version of the dependencies and the dependencies themselves if i see below and go to the dependency management section the dependency management we have all these dependencies mentioned over here so this bomb file contains all the dependencies specific version and the dependencies themselves for a specific version of spring boot whatever jars we use they have a specific compatible version spring boot team finalizes those curated jar versions and mention them inside this bomb file under the properties as the versions and they also include these dependencies now when this bomb file or bill of material file is included inside starter parent then all these dependencies are included here and finally when we include this starter parent over here then all of these dependencies are available inside our pom.xml if i want to summarize regarding this spring boot dependencies or the bomb file Spring Boot BOM is a specialized POM file used to manage and standardize dependency versions in the Spring Boot projects. It defines a curated list of dependencies and their compatible versions to avoid version conflicts and ensure compatibility between libraries. Now, inside the Spring Boot dependencies POM or the BOM file, whatever way we mention the name, there the Spring Boot team for a specific Spring Boot version, they mention the dependencies and their compatible versions. Those are already finalized there inside the BOM file. Now, that BOM file is inherited by our starter parent POM file and we inherit that in our project POM file. That way, whatever dependencies we are using, inside the starter those are having already the curated list of compatible version if i start from the very beginning let me close the others inside pom i have the starter parent my starter parent is referring to the bom or spring boot dependencies now this spring boot dependencies file contain all the curated list of the dependencies and their compatible versions as we can see over here and another important thing over here let me search here starter web all the spring boot starters their specific versions are actually present here if you see starter web is here starter web flux is here every starter dependencies the specific dependencies with 3.3.6 are present here now that is why when we are including them inside the pom.xml we don't have to mention the version you can see we are not mentioning any version over here under this specific dependencies say for spring boot starter web here i can see i have this dependencies under this spring boot starter json tomcat web etc if i control click on top of this and if i scroll down under dependencies now you can see starter starter json starter tomcat which exactly matches with this one so there is a good amount of dependency between our pom.xml and the bom file in between we have the starter parent now the starter parent and the bom file this is not directly exposed to us we define our pom.xml and there we include 
this starter parent. Internally, this starter parent uses the bill of material and our starter parents are available in our POM file. But it is always good to know this basic important fundamental concepts. Another small thing I want to show you, this is the Maven view. Under this Java view, under Maven dependencies, if you see, it shows all the granular level dependencies which are associated. Under Maven, we see the dependencies. But here, the granular level libraries or jars are directly shown to us. In Maven, we get a view in a little bit different way. First, we have the starter dependencies and then it's kind of a tree structure. One small thing I want to show you. Right now, we have everything related to 3.3.6. If I go here and change this to another version, maybe some higher version, 3.4.0. Let me update to it. Control S. A build was modified. I want to synchronize always. You can see immediately these versions got changed. If I expand them, the dependencies or libraries inside them, they were also refreshed. Similarly, now if I go to Spring Boot Starter Parent, it would be associated to version 3.4.0. Same about the bomb file or the bill of material file. This would be associated to version 3.4.0 because the library versions may change. There is no guarantee one version compatible with the lower would be compatible with the higher version. So that is the way it works. We have our Spring Boot project POM file that actually inherits the Spring Boot starter parent. And this starter parent actually inherits the Spring Boot dependencies, which is called the BOM or bill of material file. There could be some scenarios where you have to use a custom parent. In that case, you won't be able to use the starter parent. What is the alternative in that case? In case we are not using the starter parent, how we can access the Spring Boot starters that I want to demonstrate. Let me comment this out. As I have commented this out, now the dependencies are showing error because they cannot be resolved by VS Code. Let me add another section which is dependency management. Press enter, add dependencies. Under that, let me add dependency. Here, I would add the bill of materials or the bomb file. Group ID would be same. Let me add the Spring Boot dependencies. And two additional things would be there. One is type. This type should be of POM and another is scope. Scope is import. So here we have added the version 3.4.0 type as POM, scope as import and we have just saved it. Now the build is going internally. If I expand the Maven and dependencies, we can see the starter dependencies like web and test, they are resolved. If I expand them, we have the internal dependencies. Same for test. These are all there. If I expand them, all the internal dependencies are there. So this is how we can use the bomb file directly inside dependency management when we are not using the starter parent directly. So to summarize what we learned in this lesson, we went through the basic structure of a Maven POM file in a Spring Boot project. We understood what are the Spring Boot starters, what is the Spring Boot starter parent, what is the BOM file or Spring Boot dependencies file or bill of material file, how this starter, starter parent, BOM, they are dependent on each other. And finally, we saw an alternate way to create Spring Boot POM files without using the starter parent. In case, you found this lesson useful, I would request you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If possible, I would encourage you to share a comment with your feedback or input or suggestion for videos on new topics that would help me and encourage me to create new lessons which would be relevant for you. Thanks a lot for your time.